my name is Elődi János Zsigmond, and my PhD topic is about the management of cardiac implantable electronic devices. Uh, my vision is that if we can and we achieve to connect different scientific fields, then we can make the future brighter. And my mission in this task is to expand a little bit the border of my own field and to get the basic knowledge from others. Uh, up to now, I have uh, two ongoing topics which uh, I will present in details. The first one is uh, investigating the effect of different optimization techniques in patients with cardiac resynchronization therapy, or shortly CRT, in the context of a systematic review and meta-analysis. But what is optimization and why is it important? We know from several clinical trials that CRT improves quality of life and re reduces mortality and hospitalization rates in patients who have left, uh, low uh, left uh, ventricular ejection fraction and long QRS duration. But unfortunately, we have up to 40% of the patients who receive CRT but are non-responders to the therapy, meaning that they have an increased risk of mortality and hospitalization in the long run. Uh, some studies suggested that device optimization may improve CRT response rate. This optimization means that we try to adjust some device parameters, especially the atrioventricular and the ventriculoventricular delays to the individual patient's needs. The problem with optimization is that we have a lot of techniques to optimize our devices. On one hand, we have static optimization, which is based mainly on ECG and echocardiography. Uh, these techniques use a one-time measurement and apply these values for a long time period. On the other hand, we have dynamic optimization with device algorithms. These algorithms are implanted in our devices and they continuously measure weekly or even many times a day the optimal intervals and they adjust the values in different clinical situations, for example, different values in rest and in exercise. But we don't know what is the relationship between static optimization and dynamic optimization. And we also don't know if there is any difference between these optimization techniques and fixed device settings programmed empirically by the implanters. Our aim is to find the best optimization method to improve CRT response rate and long-term outcomes in case of patients with cardiac resynchronization therapy. We are comparing optimization versus fixed device settings, and also different optimization techniques to each other. Our primary outcome is CRT response rate, which is defined uh, in many different ways, and our secondary outcome is mortality and hospitalization. Our hypothesis is uh, are that optimization is superior to fixed device settings, and that dynamic optimization is at least as effective as static optimization. If we are right, then we will uh, um, achieve to increase CRT response rate and also long-term outcomes in uh, these patients. Here you can see the results of our preliminary search, the number and the design of the studies in each comparison arm. After this, uh, we did our systematic search with the following search key, the first part standing for the patient population and the second part for the intervention. And here we are now, after the full text selection, we found 65 eligible studies. This may seem a lot, but it is important to emphasize that we have many different comparison arms, and many of the studies report some of the outcomes, not all of the outcomes uh, which we are looking for. We already extracted data from uh, studies which compare dynamic optimization versus static optimization. The next step is to extract data from all the other studies. And in our um, second project, we are investigating the role of biomarkers, uh, several bi laboratory parameters, in predicting cardiac implantable electronic device infection in the context of a patient registry. So the incidence of uh, device-related infection is relatively low, but the importance uh, of this complication lies in the high mortality rates. The gold standard therapy in case of device infection is system ex extraction combined with antibiotic therapy, but this poses a serious risk for the patient and a serious cost for the healthcare systems, so it would be rational to prevent infection rather than treat it. But how can we prevent infection? 
in the guidelines, we find that we should use uh, antibiotic eluting envelopes in case of patients who are undergoing repetitive uh, interventions, and that we should delay uh, pacemaker implantation in case of patients who are presenting with fever. But we don't really find any strict recommendations in case of patients who are presenting with subclinical infection. Um, and in case of these patients, hematological parameters would be of use. But a recent meta-analysis stated that few studies investigated this correlation. Hence, we want to find out if pre-implant biomarkers can indeed predict early and one-year device-related infection. We are planning to enroll patients who are undergoing device uh, implantation, and we are gathering data about uh, uh, their pre-implant biomarkers. Uh, our outcomes being uh, primary outcome, CIAD-related infection, and our secondary outcome is mortality related to infection. We think that these pre-implant uh, parameters can somehow predict and uh, identify patients who are at high risk of infection. And if we can identify these patients, then we maybe can um, prevent device-related infection. Here you can see the uh, different variables which we want to include. Um, of these, the most important ones are risk factors for infection, which can be grouped in three main categories, patients related, procedure related, and device related. And uh, here I listed also some of the um, parameters which we want to investigate. In summary, uh, the next step for the first project would be the finalizing of uh, data extraction and for the second project to finalize the database planning and to start patient enrollment. And uh, let me close my presentation with this really short quote from Master Yoda. I think we, that we should go with this part. Thank you for your attention. <clears throat> My question is that uh, you just uh, tell that the, for the response rate, uh, you are uh, looking for one thing is for echocardiographic response. How did uh, you uh, establish or the articles establish the uh, responsiveness? Uh, I mean, the, um, how much of ejection fraction should be improved? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, maybe I can go back for my... Yes, so as you can see, we uh, are measuring many parameters when we are uh, at the follow-up visit. Uh, and uh, the most important one, uh, I mean the most reported in the studies, is indeed a left ventricular ejection fraction. Um, they mostly say, state that uh, an improvement, a relative improvement of 10% or 15%, is enough to consider the patient responder. But another important uh, factor is left ventricular uh, and systolic volume or diameter, it depends. So uh, many of the studies include this as a response criteria. Um, the problem with this criteria is that we uh, somehow arbitrarily uh, cut somewhere a line and say that, okay, this patient is responder, this patient is not. Um, the issue that we are um, investigating these mass parameters is to get a broader picture about patients. So it's not, I think that um, it is uh, not always echocardiography that uh, identifies patients the best who are responders. Thank you. I enjoyed really much your presentation. Um, can you please go to the uh, recommendation slide on the second presentation? Uh, so, yes, uh, to the guideline. So is it real that uh, they are assessing fever only? It's, 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 uh, it seems like a very odd, uh, or I don't know. Uh, well, as you can see, it's a really strong recommendation. Wow. Uh, yes, so if the patient present, is presenting with fever, we delay the implantation until uh, he uh, pre uh, is a febrile for at least 20, uh, 24 hours. Okay, but uh, then my question is that, um, so in the registry, you are uh, registering uh, the lab data biomarkers, I'm interested in CRP, but uh, then uh, uh, retrospectively, you are seeing uh, the outcomes uh, in contrast uh, with CRP, for example, but mm. uh, isn't it a uh, confounder that uh, uh, the doctors uh, who, 
who are uh, treating patients with elevated CRP are just not doing the procedure? Uh, or can you uh, control that in a registry? So um, well, maybe this is the uh, uh, guideline, but uh, I can't imagine that in everyday life uh, doctors are not assessing CRP and other infectious markers. We are assessing it, but we don't know what is the, the cutoff of, of the CRP value. So I see the CRP uh, value, it's, I know, around five. Should I uh, implant a device or should I not? Because our experience is that uh, we are now braver and braver and also there are patients who need the device and you have to implant the device. So it's a, it's a matter of um, um, does the patient uh, benefits more of delaying the implantation or he needs the device now. And uh, a retrospective registry is perfect for this because you can't really randomize to uh, patients to uh, implantation or not if they above uh, of, um, of a CRP value. Uh, so yes, we are not including any patient. I mean, yes, we will uh, state that this patient had fever, but I don't think that we will have patients who were implanted and they had fever. So this question is somewhat uh, answered. We want to see if we implanted the device in a patient who, for example, had a CRP value above five, uh, did he have an infection or not? Thank you. Thank you.